guys it's Jen welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video so I asked a few weeks ago on both YouTube and Instagram what kind of meal prep video you guys would like to see next and overwhelmingly the response was a budget meal prep so that is what I'm here today to share with you if you are new to my channel welcome I hope that you stick around and subscribe my name is Jen I'm a full-time working mom with two kids and I love to meal prep on the weekends so today I'm going to be sharing a cookbook with you that I got a few months back but haven't cooked anything out of and it is a meal prep cookbook with all pretty much healthy recipes that you can customize either for paleo gluten-free or low carb the reason why I think this cookbook is really budget-friendly is because it centers around three ingredients for each set of meal preps, meaning that you don't have to purchase a lot of different ingredients. You're using the same three core ingredients for three dinners throughout the week. So today's core ingredients are going to be chicken breast, rice, and broccoli. In addition to the three dinners that I'm going to be sharing with you, I'm also going to be sharing my recipe for homemade granola, which is a really budget-friendly option for breakfast. You can eat it with milk as cereal, or you can also sprinkle it on yogurt with berries. I have been loving doing that lately. And of course, oats are fairly cheap, so it's a great budget-friendly option. And then for the meat eaters in the house, I'm also sharing a recipe for chorizo breakfast burritos, which are also surprisingly budget-friendly. So let's jump into the meal prep and I'll share with you the process of prepping all of this food for the week. So here are all the ingredients you'll need for the three main meals. These meals serve at least four to five people, sometimes six, uh, depending on the dish. So don't worry, they are pretty large portions. And especially if you're a smaller family or you know even a family of two or three, you'll probably get plenty of leftovers out of these. So the first thing that you'll need is some bacon. You'll also need three cups of rice. The recipes call for white rice, but I'm gonna be using brown rice. Obviously, chicken is the protein that we're using for these meals, so I just have chicken breast here, uh, about five pounds that I've seasoned with salt, pepper, and garlic powder. I'm gonna end up cooking this in the Instant Pot and we'll shred up all of that chicken for use during the week. I think chicken is a really good option uh, because it actually is a lot of times cheaper than ground beef. A lot of times you can get it on sale, at least around here, for $1.99 a pound. You'll need some olive oil, some barbecue sauce of your choice, some coconut aminos. If you don't have this, you can use soy sauce, some sesame oil, one can of diced green chilies, some ginger, I wanted to get fresh ginger, but they didn't have any, so I ended up getting the ginger paste. Uh, you'll need some garlic, two limes, two medium carrots, a bunch of cilantro, some broccoli florets, also a bunch of green onions. You'll need about one cup of frozen corn. I have this fresh corn that I froze last summer, so I'm gonna be using that. Some sour cream, uh, a couple eggs, for the, that's for the fried rice some butter and then for the soup a can of beans i have white beans on hand but you can use any type of beans that you have in your pantry and then salt pepper and then the other seasonings you'll need are red pepper flake some oregano some garlic powder and some cumin Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do for this week's prep is to get our chicken cooked. Now there are several ways that you can cook your chicken and those are all actually included in the cookbook. You can cook it in the slow cooker or on the stovetop or in the oven, but I am choosing to cook mine in the Instant Pot. So I just seasoned all of my chicken breast with salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and then I put them in the Instant Pot and I poured a cup of chicken broth over the top. This particular pressure cooker has a poultry setting, but if yours doesn't, you'll just want to cook it on high pressure for 20 minutes and it will be cooked through. The good thing about cooking chicken in the Instant Pot or the slow cooker also is that it turns out tender. You definitely will not have tough chicken breast. So while that's cooking, I'm also going to cook my three cups of dry rice that we'll need for the meals this week. So I'm putting three cups of brown rice into my Instant Pot and I'm going to add three cups of water to that along with a little 
little bit of salt. I have clean hands. I'm just pushing the rice down into the water to make sure it's all covered. And for brown rice, you'll want to cook this on high pressure for 15 minutes. You could also cook the rice on top of the stovetop or in a rice cooker. The original recipes in the book called for white rice, but my family actually prefers brown rice. So that's what we used. Here's a look at our chicken and rice all prepped. While the chicken and rice were cooking, I got a start on the breakfast burritos. So this is something that if you've watched some of my meal prep videos before, you may have seen me make a version of these. Uh, the total for all of these eight burritos is around $8, depending on how much groceries cost in your area. So it's definitely budget friendly and definitely cheaper than going out to eat for breakfast. I had to fish, fish a shell out of my eggs there. So what I'm doing is I'm cracking 12 eggs into a bowl and then I'm just going to whisk those with a little bit of half and half. You could use milk or cream and then I'll sprinkle some salt and pepper in there and get those whisked up. These breakfast burritos are going to be made with chorizo and I actually ate some breakfast burritos at work last week that were made with chorizo and it, they were delicious and so this is kind of what gave me the inspiration for this. I'm pouring my eggs into a nonstick skillet that I just put a little bit of olive oil in there and I'm just going to cook those over medium heat until they are thoroughly scrambled and cooked through. Make sure that you don't overcook them because you obviously will be heating these back up in the microwave and you don't want your eggs to be tough. For these blue pans that I have, they are nonstick and I really like them. They were given to me as a gift, but they are available on Amazon, so I'll link them down below as well as that rubber fork. Here's the chorizo that I'm going to be using for these burritos. I actually found these two packs of chorizo with queso on clearance at Hy-Vee. They were only $2 each, and so that's what I'm teaching. You could buy regular chorizo in rolls. Um, watch me dump eggs all over my stove. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> um, but anyway, Anyway, you could buy regular chorizo. This one just happened to have a little bit of cheese mixed in and it was really good. If you didn't want to use chorizo, you could also use crumbled bacon and cook that up or ham or sausage, or you could also just use veggies and make these vegetarian. So I'm just going to mix my scrambled eggs together with the chorizo in a dish. I wanna make sure that I get this well combined so that you get some in every bite while you're eating the burrito. And I also like to stir my breakfast burrito ingredients together in a bowl before I assemble the burritos just to give the filling a chance to cool off so I don't burn myself. So I just want to take a moment and address some substitution options because if you're watching this video in real time, which is at the end of March 2020, we are having some shortages in certain areas of the country um, as far as groceries go right now. So feel free to use different options if you don't have these things available in your area. I am using these whole wheat flour tortillas that I actually got from Walmart in the deli section. My Walmart was very picked over in terms of tortillas, but I was able to to find these. If you couldn't find wheat tortillas, you can definitely use flour tortilla, you know, white flour tortillas. Um, use small ones, big ones, whatever you have on hand or can find in the grocery store. I am putting a little bit of extra cheese in these because I wanted to make sure that they were adequately cheesy enough. So I rolled up some cheddar cheese in some and some American in the others. So there are my burritos all the way filled up. It will be easier to roll these if you can find the large burrito size tortillas, um, just so you're aware, but you can make them with smaller tortillas as well. So I like to wrap these individually in parchment paper and then I'll put half of them in the refrigerator and half of them in the freezer. Uh, we will probably only go through four or five of them this week and so it's best if I go ahead and freeze the other half that way we'll have them when uh, we need them in the following weeks and to heat these up from the refrigerator uh, you just wrap them in the or leave them in the um, parchment paper rather put them in the microwave for about one to two minutes until they are heated through and if you're going to put things in the freezer always make sure that you label your bag because if you're like me you'll tell yourself that you'll remember what's in it but you really won't I 
really hope that you guys try these out, whether you make them with the chorizo or a different kind of meat or veggies. We have been enjoying them this week along with some extra hot sauce on the side. Okay, so the next budget-friendly option I'm going to show you is a recipe for crunchy maple nut granola. And the total for this, which makes about eight cups of granola, is around $10. I know that might seem like a lot for granola, but when you see how much you get out of this, you'll realize that it's actually quite a bit of granola and it's a lot cheaper uh, than you can buy it for in the store and it's much tastier. So I have a really large bowl and I'm putting in there some maple syrup along with some canola oil. You can use vegetable oil or canola oil, whatever you have on hand. I would not use olive oil for this because it will be uh, a bit too flavorful um, for this. You don't want to use olive oil typically for baking unless it specifically calls for it. I'm also going to whisk in some brown sugar and some vanilla. This recipe calls for a third of a cup of brown sugar and to me it makes it perfectly sweet but if you want it to be sweeter you could add a little bit of extra brown sugar and next I'm going to add in just a sprinkle of salt that just helps bring out the sweetness in the recipe and makes it taste really good. I have some old fashioned oats and I'm going to pour five cups of those into the bowl along with the sugar and oil mixture. Make sure that you're using old fashioned oats for this recipe and not quick cooking oats. The original recipe that I got for this is from a Cook's Country cookbook that I have, which I can link the cookbook down below, um, but I'll also type the recipe out so you guys can try this. It's very simple and very forgiving. Once you add your oats, you can basically kind of customize your add-ins. Um, for this particular batch, I'm adding some almonds, some chopped pecans, and some chopped cashews. But you can pretty much use whatever nuts you have in your pantry. Or if you want to make this nut-free, you could add other seeds as well. And the original recipe calls for adding dried fruit. I'm not a huge fan of dried fruit in my granola, so I didn't add it. But if you have some, you could add um, chopped up dried mango or apricots or craisins or raisins. You just want to make sure that you add those after it is baked. So after your granola is thoroughly combined, um, you'll just pour this out onto a cookie sheet that is lined with parchment paper. So I just took my biggest cookie sheet, lined it with parchment paper, and then you want to spread the granola out on there and then pack it down with a spatula. This is the key for this recipe to get crunchy granola because as the granola bakes, it will sort of solidify together. And then when it comes out of the oven and cools, you'll be able to break it apart into like little crispy crumbles. So after it's done baking for the um, amount of time in the recipe, take it out and remove it to a cooling rack and then you want to make sure that you cool this completely to allow it to crisp up before you start to crumble it. So once it was cooled completely, I just took a spatula and um, broke it apart. I have a mason jar here. That's when I'm going to store mine in. And I have a wide mouth funnel as well. This is super helpful. You guys have probably seen me use this before for many different things, but I would definitely recommend a wide mouth funnel if you're going to use mason jars to store things. No, Okay, so here is all the granola that I got out of this batch, two big mason jars and a smaller container. We like to eat this with milk or sprinkled on top of yogurt and my kids love it too. All right, so next up, I'm going to show you how I prepped these three meals using the core ingredients of chicken, broccoli, and rice. A couple of these recipes call for cooked bacon, and so I'm just taking the time to cook a whole pound of bacon. I have a baking tray here that I lined with foil. Um, sometimes I get questions on where I get my baking trays or my baking racks. I believe I've gotten these racks at Walmart before. I don't know, I've had them for so long. And the baking trays are Wilton brand. I'll try to link some down below. Sometimes I like to make my bacon in the oven and sometimes I like to make it on the stovetop, but it definitely is a lot easier cleanup if you make it 
in the oven. So I like to put this in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes until it is crispy. There are two recipes this week that are going to use broccoli, the barbecue chicken and rice casserole along with the fried rice. And so basically I just took my broccoli and divided it in half and I'm chopping half of it up for uh, the casserole recipe into small florets. The cookbook actually said to uh, make this into broccoli rice with a food processor, but I didn't want to drag my food processor out and we kind of like the bigger chunks of broccoli. And so that's what I ended up using for this and it worked just fine. So I'm going to put the broccoli in a skillet. I have a little bit of butter and oil in the bottom of there and I'm going to add some salt and a little bit of water just so I can get the broccoli to steam and I'll probably cook this for anywhere from four to six minutes until the broccoli becomes tender. Um, some people like their broccoli a little bit crispier. We tend to prefer ours softer so just cook it to your liking. <laughs> So next you're going to take half of your cooked rice and stir this into the broccoli until everything is heated through. Um, then you're going to season it with salt, pepper, and some garlic powder. There are kind of two options for putting this casserole together. You can prep all the components and then put it together on the night that you're going to eat it, or you can also prep it ahead of time just until the point where it's ready to go into the oven and then stick it in the refrigerator. And then all you have to do, um, you know, at the end of your day is to bake it. So I also wanna say that this original recipe did not call for cheese, but I cannot have broccoli and rice, <laughs> I feel like, without cheese. So I did modify this recipe and add one cup of shredded cheddar into there. I would definitely recommend that. Um, it did give it a good flavor, especially with the broccoli and the rice and the barbecue chicken. So I have a freezer container there and you just saw me putting the broccoli rice mixture in the bottom. We actually ended up giving most of this to Adam's parents. Um, now with everything that's going on and social distancing and um, them kind of being <laughs> stuck at home more, we wanted to take them over some meals. And so that is why I was putting that in a uh, freezer meal container, but I did cook some of this and Kira actually ate it for dinner last night and really loved it. So you're going to take a third of your chicken that you cooked up and put that in a bowl. Either you can shred it or you can cube it up, whatever is your choice. Um, here I'm struggling with getting the lid off of the barbecue sauce. And so that's why I'm not in front of the camera. I seriously had to like get scissors and pry off <laughs> the foil part. It was not coming off. Um, but you can mix this chicken with the barbecue sauce of your choice. I like cookies brand. I think it's, it's kind of local to the Midwest. Let me know if you can get it in your area, but whatever barbecue sauce is your favorite, go ahead and use that. So you want to put in about a cup and a half of barbecue sauce into your chicken and mix that up. And then you're just going to spread this over the rice and broccoli mixture. Now I have to say, when I looked at this recipe, you know, I like all these things, right? I like chicken and barbecue and broccoli and rice, but I wasn't sure how everything was going to taste together. And I have to say it was really, really good. And this is definitely a kid friendly dish too. My daughter loved it. So I'm taking four pieces of the bacon that I had previously cooked up and I'm just dicing those up and then I'll sprinkle it on top of the casserole. So since, like I said, this was going to my in-laws, I went ahead and labeled the top with instructions and gave that to them. One thing I want to mention also is that when this comes out of the oven, you can top it with some green onions. I did end up giving them a little cup of green onions to have with theirs, but I just didn't show it in the video. So here is the little casserole dish that I cooked up just so I could taste it and test it for you guys. And this is definitely a winner. This was one of our favorites from these three meals and I would definitely make it again. 
Okay, so the next meal that we're gonna put together is a white chicken chili. And this again is using the core ingredients of chicken and rice. So the first thing that I'm doing is chopping up an onion. I'm just going to dice that finely and get it into a soup pot with some olive oil. And then I'm also going to add some garlic. This recipe also has a couple different methods that you could use to prep it. You could definitely prep all the ingredients. Um, that's kind of how the cookbook lays it out is dice up all your veggies and put those in containers in the refrigerator and then put the soup together, um, you know, after work or whenever you're ready to eat it. I think it would be super quick and easy that way. Um, but I'm just putting it together on the night we were going to eat it. And definitely since I already had the chicken prepped, it made it super quick and easy. So for the garlic for this recipe, I did have fresh garlic on hand, and so that's what I used, but you could definitely use uh, garlic paste or minced garlic in a jar. Whatever you have on hand will work fine for this. Even in a pinch, you could probably use garlic powder. It would work just fine. So I went ahead and sauteed up the um, onion and garlic. That is what's going on right now, but here's the green onions. I'm taking a minute to put in a little cup for the top of my in-laws barbecue chicken casserole. So I'm just going to saute my onions and garlic together over medium heat until they get nice and soft just make sure that you don't burn them after the onions and garlic are cooked I'm going to add one four ounce can of diced green chilies I would recommend getting the mild green chilies especially if you have kids that are sensitive to heat and are going to be eating this sometimes and it depends on the brand you get to some of the green chilies can be a little bit too spicy, I find. Um, if you didn't want to use green chilies, you could leave those out and use like chopped up green pepper instead. But honestly, I ate this for dinner um, the other night and I didn't think it was spicy at all. So I'm going to take the, another third of my chicken and shred it up into the pot here. And then I'll work on adding my seasonings. <music> So for the seasonings for this soup, you're going to add uh, dried oregano, salt, cumin, and black pepper. Uh, I also added some chopped cilantro at the end because I think it gives it a nice flavor. So once your seasonings are in, go ahead and add your chicken stock, six cups of that, and then you can add corn and one can of beans and then bring that to a boil. The recipe calls for frozen corn, but if you don't have that on hand and you have a can of corn, that will work fine. And again, any kind of beans you have in your pantry will work fine as well. Once this came to a boil, I just went ahead and boiled it for about five minutes. Everything is really cooked in here, so you just kind of wanna make sure that the corn is heated through. Um, for this recipe to kind of make it a little bit creamier, it does call to add half a cup of sour cream, which you want to do at the end so that it doesn't curdle. Just add the sour cream, turn the heat down to super low and stir it all together until the sour cream becomes incorporated. If you wanted to make this non-dairy, you could use coconut cream. Um, the one thing I want to mention about this cookbook, which is Cook Once, Eat All Week, and it's by Cassie Joy Garcia. And no, this video is not affiliated with her or sponsored in any way. I just really like the concept of this cookbook. Um, but it does give you ideas in this cookbook to customize these recipes. So for example, for this recipe, if you wanted to make it low carb, you would remove the beans and maybe add chopped veggies. Um, for the chicken and rice casserole, you would maybe use cauliflower rice instead of regular rice. So I do like that it gives you options for that. I added the juice of one lime in there along with a lot of chopped cilantro. Go ahead and taste it and adjust the flavors. And here is how I served mine. You can serve it with a little bit of cheese on top, some chopped cilantro, um, an avocado would be really good sliced up on top of there, as well as some sour cream. We really did enjoy this and I will definitely be making something like that again. 
Okay, so the last dinner or meal I guess that I'm going to show you out of these ingredients is chicken fried rice. And this is something that I don't really make all that often and I'm not sure why because Adam really likes it. It's one of his favorite <laughs> meals and it's super easy and budget friendly to make at home. So the other half of the broccoli that we cleaned up at the beginning of the video, you're gonna use that in this recipe. So right now I'm just chopping this up and getting it into a Ziploc bag. That's something that you can definitely do um, ahead of time, you know, and then that way it's ready to go on the night when you want to cook. So to start out this fried rice recipe, I am whisking up two eggs in a bowl and I'm going to scramble those in a skillet along with a little bit of melted butter until they are cooked through. Um, you can leave these out if you want to make like an egg free fried rice we personally do like eggs in our fried rice and so i opted to leave this in but just scramble those in your skillet and then when they're all done remove them to a plate before you start the veggies so this particular recipe calls for carrots and green onions and broccoli of course but feel free to customize this recipe to whatever you have in your pantry and fridge if you have zucchini or peppers or um, you know water chestnuts in your pantry or anything like that it's a really great way to use up veggies um, and canned items that are in your pantry so the recipe did also call to shred these carrots but I thought it was just easy enough to dice them so I went ahead and peeled them and I'm just cutting these into really small pieces so that they will cook quickly um, and then I'll get those into a skillet along with the broccoli and and a little bit of oil. I did add a little bit of water too and I just kind of sauteed slash steamed these veggies until they were tender and cooked through. So while those veggies are cooking, I'm going to chop up my green onions and garlic. I'll add those in just at the end of the cook time for the veggies, just because they don't take that long to cook. And I will link this chef's knife that I'm using down below. If you're in the kitchen a lot cooking, I would definitely recommend a really good chef's knife. It's something that makes your job a lot easier and honestly makes cooking a lot more enjoyable. So I have my skillet here with my veggies that are mostly cooked through. I'm adding onion and garlic. And you know what I realized after I was filming this is that I forgot to put my ginger in. <laughs> Evidently, I wasn't reading the recipe carefully enough. So this is the stage where you would add in your grated ginger as well if you uh, remembered, unlike me. So I have the rest of my chicken here. This is the last sort of third of that. And I went ahead and diced that up. You could shred it if that's easier for you. And you just want to put this in with the veggies and kind of stir that around until it is heated through. I then removed everything to a plate and I'm going to fry the rice up separately. That is so I can make sure that I get a good crisp on the rice. So I added a little bit of extra oil to the skillet. I'm putting in the other half of my cooked rice and then I'll saute that around for a little bit before I add the rest of the seasonings. Um, the recipe calls to season this rice with coconut aminos, but if you don't have that, you could use soy sauce as well as toasted sesame oil and red pepper flakes. Um, one thing I would say on this particular recipe is cut back on the salt and wait to add salt until you add the coconut aminos and all of the rest of the ingredients because you definitely don't want it to be too salty. So once those are all in, I'm just gonna stir that around and allow the rice to get seasoned before I add everything else back in. So I'm going to add my eggs back in and then this is basically done. Just go ahead and taste it for seasoning. If it needs more salt or garlic or sesame oil or red pepper flake, whatever you think it needs, go ahead and add that at this time. Like I said, this is super quick to throw together on a weeknight, um, especially if you have everything already chopped up. And then at the end, you just want to add a little bit of fresh chopped cilantro on top and that is it. I actually cooked this ahead of time and we're using it for meal prep 
prep for lunches this week. That's another great idea. It heats up really easy, is nice and filling, definitely budget friendly. And this was one of the best batches of fried rice that I have made. So I will have all of these recipes typed out down below. All right, so that is gonna wrap it up for this week's meal prep. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this and that it gave you some ideas for your own meal prep for the week. Um, I really would recommend this cookbook. I think that it's a great resource for budget-friendly cooking and meal prepping. There are also a bunch of additional recipes in here that are not just for meal prepping, but especially if you are looking to cook some healthy food on a limited budget, I think this is a great way to do it. Um, I will have the cookbook linked down below. You can order it on Amazon or probably get it anywhere where cookbooks are sold. And thank you again for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.